your role may be big, but we're called to be the salt and the light, making a positive difference where God has placed us. I don't know where God has placed you. Wherever you are, let us be the salt of the earth, bringing flavor to someone's life, bringing flavor to people around us. So let us embrace our calling and strive to live a life that truly reflects the character of Christ. The second thing, truth, sorry, light. You are the light of the world, Jesus declared. Jesus said to you and me that you are the light of the world. So in addition to being compared to salt, Christians are also the light of the world. So what does light symbolize? Light symbolizes truth, power, holiness, and also knowledge. What does light do? What does this light do? Uh, we have a lot of light bulbs, right? What does this do? Light helps us. Let light help people to see, right? to find ways in the dark. Back in those days, when we don't have electricity, people use torch, right, at night to, to find ways. So we are called to be the light of the world. We should shine the truth of Jesus and lead others to him. <clears throat> Our light should not be hidden. Our light should not be hidden, but it should be visible to others so that others may see the good deeds of our Lord and give glory to Him. Nobody's, as the Bible says, nobody's light a lamp and put under the bowl, right? They put on a lampstand so that people can see. Likewise, we should shine our light. We should not keep our light hidden. Just as light illuminates paths, it guides, right? And it directs. So we are called to lead others to Jesus, to help find their way to salvation and eternal life. Uh, we are not meant to keep the light just to ourselves, right? But to share it with others so that they may also experience the love and grace of God. Yes, I, I have I've seen that the Korean church are doing a great, great job in doing mission work. Uh, even our church here, they are doing a great mission work with other churches. And also, uh, I've also come across and learned that there are a lot of Korean missionaries in different parts of the world, in Africa, in Asian countries, right? So the Korean church are doing a great job. So that's what being the light of the world is all about. You know, sharing our uh, light that God has given to us. Our light should not be hidden, as I say. It should be shined brightly through, through our works, actions, and also our attitudes. We we'll just keep ourselves. My right? Christianity is not being, you know, uh, it's not something that we keep to ourselves. It is all about sharing. Right? So when people see our good works, they should draw to the soul of our light. Just as Jesus declared that he is the light of the world. Not only Jesus is the light of the world, he's the same about them. Tell us that we are the light of the world. So sharing the truth and leading others to Jesus. However, on the other hand, uh, sharing the truth and leading others to Jesus is not always easy, right? It requires boldness, courageous, and also perseverance. And we have also seen from the life of Apostle Paul, when he was preaching the gospel, it was not easy, right? He was persecuted, he was beaten, he was thrown into prison for sharing the good news, for sharing the gospel. And even today, it is not easy. We may face opposition, resistance, but let us not give up. Let us not be discouraged. Right? Let us stand firm in our faith, knowing that our life has the power to transform lives and bring hope to the darkness of the place. So what does it mean, being the light of the world? Being, in the, being the light of the world means living a life of integrity, and righteousness. It means being honest, humble, and loving in all our interactions. It also means treating others with kindness and compassion, just as Jesus did. We have seen in the ministry of Jesus, 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 did, not, does not, Jesus did not treat people with injustice or partiality. Right? He treat everyone in place. Maybe the sick, the lepros, the ill one, the beggar, the rich one, he treated everyone in 
right? So let us do as Jesus did. Our light should shine in our public actions, but also in our private lives, right? Both in private and also in public actions. Our light should be a constant presence guiding us in all of our ways. So when we shine the light of Jesus and lead others to him, we are bringing glory to God. And our purpose as a Christian is not to bring glory to ourselves, right? But to point others to God who deserve all the glory and praise. So, living as salt means we have a responsibility to bring others to Jesus and help them experience the life that God offers to us. So when we talk about uh, being salt and light, we're not just talking about sharing Bible verses or going to mission trip, right? Of course, those are important aspects of uh, Christian ministry, right? But it is all about living our faith in action in every aspect of our life and making a positive impact on the people around us. The impact may be, may be small, right? It may be just one person. It's wonderful. And also being Salt and light also require us to be uh, distinctive in our behavior. Right? We should strive to step out from the crowd, not just in uh, a self-righteous or judgmental way, but displaying the integrity and the goodness of the Lord. Our action should reflect the values and teachings of Jesus. And also, being the salt and light of the world also you know, salt is both tasty and useful, right? Salt is not only used for preserving uh, food, and also it does not, it does not only use to flavor uh, our food, but it has a lot of use, right? A lot of use. Salt, right? salt is used in many different ways. So as it enhances the flavor of the food and adds values to the dishes, similarly as Christians, we should add values to the life of others, not destroying someone's life. And flavor, right? We should be loving, kind, compassionate, offering a helping hand and a listening ear to someone who is needing. Our faith as Christians should not be just a mere show or a set of rules that we follow. Oh, I'm a Christian, so I have to go to church every Sunday. No, that should not be a set of rules that we follow, right? It should be transformative, transformative experience. Every day we seek God, allow the allow the Holy Spirit to transform our life, so that we will also be able to transform others' life. So, living uh, as salt and light is not an easy journey; it is a continuous journey, right? And no one is perfect. We all are. We are human beings. We all make, we all make, make mistakes along the way in the course of our life. I make mistakes, you make mistakes, but that's okay. We are human beings, right? But through faith in Jesus Christ, we have the assurance that our sins are forgiven so that we can have a renewed relationship with God every day, right? So let us embrace our calling to be the salt and light of the world, adding values and guiding others towards Jesus. Uh, one of our ways uh, we can shine our light is by inviting others to join our fellowship, right? Attending, why do we need fellowship? Because attending church is an opportunity to grow together, right? When we come to the church and we have fellowship, we grow together. And when we come to the church, we have fellowship together with our fellow believers. We hear the word of God and also we experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, we should continually seek the light. I mean, we should continually seek the presence of God. Let me end my sermon by sharing a story. Okay? In 1855, Edward Kimball, a Sunday school teacher uh, in Chicago, okay, uh, led to a 19-year-old shoe clerk, uh, someone who published a shoe, okay, to Christ. Okay? And this shoe clerk, eventually became a world famous evangelist who led thousands of people to God. And his name is uh, D.L. Moody. I don't know whether you have heard the name D.L. Moody or not, but 
Dale Moody is a very popular theologian, uh, and yeah, in, in among the uh, theology, yeah, theological institution. And there is also a uh, institution, institute uh, named Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Okay, and also Dale Moody has wrote a good, very good, strong theology book. So, so Edward Kimball. Uh, change this uh, sutra, Dale Moody, and this, this, this Dale Moody became one of the famous evangelists during his time. And when he was uh, in the year 1879, uh, one of the British theologians, he encouraged, he, he, he encouraged this British theologian named Frederick B. Mayer to change his preaching style. Okay? Probably he was not preaching so well, so uh, Dale Moody encouraged uh, this theologian, Frederick Mayer, to preach, to change his preaching style. And as he did, later on, when he went, he, when, when Mayer went to America for a preaching trip, uh, Mayer influenced and discouraged another preacher. Okay? Well, his name is Wilbur Kepman to become a very effective evangelist. And as Kempman uh, work grew, bigger, larger his ministry, he needed an assistant, so he hired someone. Okay? He hired a former baseball player, and he doesn't have, he, he was not very well educated, his education level was just high school, and he helped him, and his name was Billy Sunday. I don't know how many of you have heard the name Billy Sunday, but he is also a famous preacher. And he eventually led millions of people to Christ. And in 1924, while Sunday was preaching in North Carolina, uh, he, they, they formed a group, prayer group. And in their prayer group, uh, they invited an evangelist by the name Mordecai Ham to preach. Okay? And it was while, while Mordecai Ham was preaching, a teenager named Billy Graham, whom we all knew, right, gave his life to Jesus. And Billy Graham has told about Jesus to many people. He had even come to South Korea, right? And he had even come to my uh, place, Nagaland. He had traveled across the world, declaring the name, preaching the gospel, and changed the life of the people, many, millions of people, right? It all started with this Sunday school teacher, Kimbo. Of, of, obviously, this Sunday school teacher, I've also heard about Jesus from someone else, but it all started with this uh, Sunday school teacher who led a very young man to Christ, and in the course of the life, the, the life passed on, right? The life passed on. Jesus is saying that we can all be in one kingdom, right? You can influence one person, and that person can influence another, and somewhere down the line, it might be the next Billy Graham or Mother Teresa. So let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You are very influential. You are more. You are far more influential than you. Sometimes we think of our of ourselves so small, and we underestimate our capabilities. Right? But let me encourage you. Do not be discouraged. And let us take courage and be the salt and the light of the world. Amen.